Well, today on Nation Window Cleaning Podcast, we're going to be talking all about water fed hacks, tips, what to look for, what to do, what to make it even better. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully, you love the show. Hopefully, you follow the show. Hopefully, you follow me on TikTok and everywhere else. But more importantly, hopefully, you maybe get something out of it. Uh, Go back and watch. We have five years of content. Literally, every single week we've done this. Uh, Absolutely amazing um, to me that it's gone this long. So, hopefully, you get a lot of content out there. Go back, follow all that. But more importantly, shameless plug of the day. I am a rep for windowcleaner.com and that is what I do for a living. So if you want supplies and I know you need supplies, let me put them in. My number is 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text. I text all day, literally 50, 60 times a day. Uh, Let me repeat that. 50 to 60 different people, hundreds of times a day I text. So yes. That is my life. The life of a product specialist. But anyway, I'd love to be a rep, truly. That's why I do all this. Uh, That's how I make my cheddar. I'd love to put your orders in. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but I get credit for it. And then I get to continue to buy my my hair gel, which everybody points out. Uh, By the way, uh, thank you to David uh, again for pointing that out. I have so many of you awesome, awesome customers and clients uh, that do that. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to all uh, you uh, private uh, coaching people. Thank you to everybody. Uh, it's been an absolute amazing journey and we're going to keep going with it. So uh, hopefully you are one of the absolutely amazing cool kids. By the way, speaking of cool kids, there's version one sticker. There's version two sticker. And oh, I don't have a version three. The version three cool kid stickers out. So if you do put an order in or you text me to be like, yo, give me a sticker. And I will make sure to hook you up with the Cool Kid sticker. And as always, I am also the owner, the proud owner of American Window Cleaner Magazine. AWC Magazine, the only magazine made for specifically window cleaners. And it's been going since 1986. It's absolutely awesome. There's posters from window cleaning in there. There's all these stickers come from the magazine. It's absolutely amazing. So go to awcmag.com and get a subscription, please. Uh, Really, truly, uh, I want to have thousands of these subscriptions out there. And I know there are tons of you who still don't have it because you're like, ah, it's a magazine. I don't know if I want... Yes, what are you doing while you're going poop? Hmm? Truth, right? Stop playing words with friends and read American Window Cleaner Magazine. Plus, you get to be in like the elite, the elite, like, cool kid. You put your orders in through me. You got your magazine. You're just watching podcasts like a window cleaning nerd. And you're just being better every single day. So anyway, there you go. Shameless plugs are all uh, done. Go do that. It would be absolutely mean the world to me if you did all that cool stuff. Anyway, but today we are talking all about water fed. Now, I wanted to do like a water fed 101 again because I haven't done that in a couple years. But then I thought, well, what would be cool because a lot of you are in water fed and the people who are not in water fed are looking into water fed, kind of wondering what kind of things to do. I mean, this is a big question. I talk to people who have been water feeding for years that don't know a lot of this stuff, which is crazy to me, crazy to me. But that's just how it is, right? Water fed is one of those things that I can hand you a squeegee for the first time ever or anybody off the street, say, hey, clean that window. They do it, right? They're starting in the middle of the window. They're just, it looks terrible. They just laugh and they go, oh man, I am not good at this. But with water fed, I can hand somebody a water fed pole. They get done with the window and say there's spots on it. They go, this thing doesn't work. Yeah, what, this thing you just tried for the first time, you didn't get it perfect right away? What? It's still a tool. You still have to get uh, an understanding for it. And water fed works. A thousand percent water fed is amazing. Amazing. 
Absolutely the best tool for win window cleaning there absolutely is. Now, people come in every time I say that. They're like, oh yeah, well, what about inside windows, huh? Well, it's a tool. You still can't use it. That's like using a ladder on ground level windows. That would be ridiculous, right? Just like using water fed inside. But anyway, I digress. It frustrates me because there's still some people out there who, listen, if you don't have water fed, you're not in water fed, awesome. Like it's a tool. You don't have to be. I would never be a window cleaner without it. I couldn't be a window cleaner without it. Anybody who's in water fed now could not be a window cleaner without it. I know your skills you could be, but just like you wouldn't want to be. But if you've never used it or you have used somebody else's system and it didn't work, it's because it was wrong or you didn't know what you were doing, don't tell me it doesn't work because water fed is phenomenal. It's absolutely amazing. People are always like literally the most common question I get that I get asked probably dozens of times a week is, is it worth spending the $2,500 to get into it? That's completely up to you. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money because it's really easy for me to spend your money, right? But I can tell you for me, it's been absolutely amazing. Anyway, let's get into it a little bit, right? So in water fed cleaning, if you're checking the water quality, right? You get a TDS meter with a lot of systems. The TDS meter is total dissolved solids. You're finding out, people always say too, um, yeah, I checked my PPM. That's parts per million. Like that's just the measure of, you know, a thing. The TDS is what you're checking. A TDS meter is telling you what's in the water, right? By the way, little nerd, the nerd out thing inside, there's a little two uh, steel posts kind of. And what it's doing is just sending a signal, a electrical signal. Pure water does not conduct electricity. So what it does is it finds the speed at which this electric uh, current is picked up by this one, and that's telling you what's in between there. So anyway, that meter is telling you what is the quality of the water or the TDS of the water. And we're looking for zero, at least under 10. Under 10 is pure, pure water. You're talking about under 10 parts per million. That's that PPM we talked about. But anyway, zero is zero, right? A lot of times people will try a system for the first time uh, they may not get it done right, right? Or they've been using this for years and go, oh man, my guys were using this thing and it's leaving spots. Uh, do you know what's wrong with the system? Okay, cool. Yeah. So you test the water every single time you turn the machine on. What's the water? Ah, oh, it's a zero. That's what's so confusing. Well, it's not anything from the system, but it is. Yeah, no, no. My guys know what they're doing. They don't because zero is zero. If there's zero parts per million, there's nothing in the water. There's nothing that's in the water that's being left on the glass. That dirt or spots or whatever is coming from something else. That's where you get your frames, your washing, the rinsing isn't there. You get too much pressure, all that thing that kind of goes into that. They're like, no, I've been with water. I've been using water fed for for uh, you know five years. I know what I'm doing. Well, okay, that's very very true probably, but then you would know that zero is zero right? Like if you build yourself a big box, or say you go into a room and there are zero snakes in there and you get bit by a snake, they were zero snakes in the room. You brought the snake in with you. <laughs> That's the dumbest analogy ever. But right, so zero is zero. You have to understand and trust the meters. Testing the water tells you exactly what it is. People go, oh man, I get in spots. What could it, what is it? Cool. What's your water? Oh, I didn't test it. Well, I can't help you then. Oh uh, yeah, but like, what? What do you think it is? What well, I literally cannot tell you because it's either coming from the glass or coming from the water. If you didn't test it, I can't tell you which one it is. This is impossible. It's impossible, right? So always test your water. Always look for zero. But there's something else, which a bunch of these fly high flow machines come out, um, uh, pumped machines, things like that. There's such a thing as too much pressure, which I know in your head, you're like, yeah, right, man. I just love the pressure, but there's flow and pressure. Flow means water. You could use a lot of water. You could have too much water and you're wasting water, but that's on you. But pressure is the PSI. If you have too much pressure, it hits the glass, it sprays all over. You're like, oh yeah, man, I'm blasting it. But remember, the water you're putting on there is zero. But if that water splashes on anything else, 
it's going to pick up dirt, right? Siding, frames, uh, anything that you didn't clean, brick, awning, soffit, fascia, anything you didn't clean, that water is going to spray little droplets, pick up dirt, drip back on the glass, and now that dirt is on the glass, you go, well, what the heck's happening? right so you can have too much pressure if it's just splashing all over on the window and you're not getting great results just turn it down turn the water down it does not have to be on all the way you could literally clean windows like an old man going to the bathroom it just has to get past the bristles right so if you're getting spotting or some kind of issue turn the water down a lot of people don't know that it could be a pressure thing the pressure is great by the way in a side note when you go, I'm not getting water through my system, what is it? And we go through everything and go, oh, it's, it's the pressure on the building. No, nah, pressure's great. You, you can't see pressure. It is impossible to see pressure. You're seeing flow. Flow is different than pressure. By the way, any angry emails you have, send them to jersey at windowcleaner.com. But I talk to people, you know, we troubleshoot, that kind of thing, and uh, it's great. When I troubleshoot things with people, they go, no, that's not it. Cool, you didn't even check. <laughs> it's like, how are we doing this, right? And then when they do check, they're like, oh, yeah. Because there's only so many things it can be, literally. There's like a system like, say, the Zero Pure Revolution, we'll say. Three three, three pieces. Pre-filter, RO, DI. That's it. Well, something, something's not working. Okay, it's one of three things if it's the system. It's very simple. It's a sequential filtration system. It's, it's ridiculously easy, right? But check it. Check the pressure. If the pressure is too high, turn it down, right? In that same thing is if you're um, cleaning the glass and you are getting some spots or something like that, here's a way to clean the glass. If you're new to Waterford, this is how you do it, by the way. But you clean the frame, scrub the frame, and don't tell me, oh, I don't scrub frames. I just stay away from them. You're doing it wrong, literally wrong. Scrub the frame up and down on each side, side to side on the top, rinse the frame real quick, then go onto the glass. It's that easy. The frames have never ever been cleaned before if they didn't get cleaned water fed before. Our traditional window cleaner never will clean the frames. So the frames have like, you know, the property's 20 years old, that's 20 years of dirt if they've never gotten washed. That's what splashes back on the glass. So scrub that frame, rinse that frame, you won't get some of that splash back, right? But in that same process, remember your bristles come out like this, right? If this is the glass and you scrub, the bristles go like this. Now, if I get all the way to the top of the window and I come back down like this, this is what the bristles did. Did you see where the bristles were, right? If I'm, if I'm going up, the bristles are always going to be back. If I'm pulling this way, the bristles will always be this way. But what happens is, when you go, say the top of my hand is the top of the window, or we'll say this, there we go. So as I go up, right, I stop at the frame and I come back down. Did you see the bristles never touched this part? So the trick to that is when you start, just go side to side. So if this is the, the frame here, I hope this translates well, but say the, the screen is the frame. What you're doing is as you're going up and coming back down, you're missing the top. And that's where you get that little band. So what you do after you scrub the frames really well, I go and scrub side to side on the top of the window. Going side to side, the bristles can go side to side like this, right? And then I can do this, which makes my bristles do this in the corners, and I can get all of that. I do that on the top, and then everything else can be gotten with an up and down motion. I do that on the bottom. That stops you from getting any type of bands of cloudiness, which is dirt left on the glass. Right? Side to side on the top. This is after you do your frames. There's another cool thing that you can do uh, in rinsing. Because people are like, well, how do you know if you're clean? If there's anything stuck to the glass that didn't get off, when you're rinsing, and this is on hydrophilic glass, right? Hydrophilic being it sheets really well. When the water's flowing down, it's sheeting on the glass. If it creates a, um, a horseshoe, that means there's a piece of debris right here you'll see the water come down around the crud that's on the glass. That's when you use a walnut attachment or something like that. Flip the thing around, scrub it in real good, and uh, kind of go from there, right? That is 
the way that you can rinse and see what's on the glass. But truly, if you've not used a water fed, or even if you have used a water fed, you may not even know you're doing this. But when you put your brush on the glass for the first time before you start scrubbing it, it's like, eh, 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 and then it just becomes smoother and smoother and smoother. You can feel if there's crud on the glass, like dirt, right? You're agitating that, removing it, making it part of the water, and then rinsing it off, right? Super, super easy to kind of feel that. Feeling and seeing when you're rinsing, just paying attention to the process. If it's done the same way every time, you don't never leave spots. I'm telling you, so I sold my company. For those of you who know, this was a while ago. But before that, I probably had one callback in two years from then, from Waterfed. And uh, really what it was, was um, uh, just really dirty. It was tons of oxidation that they just didn't get off. Right, oxidation has to be scrubbed a little bit longer. They kind of pushed it. Uh, it was super overcast. They just didn't see it, but they slacked. And I know the guy that slacked. I know that he slacked. He was newer, and uh, the guys that were chaperoning, watching him, just kind of didn't pay attention. So anyway, was what it was. But these guys are like, oh man, it just doesn't leave good results because you're doing it wrong. Because you're doing it wrong. No. Nah. I've been a window cleaner for 20 years. I can totally go faster than you. On ground level, sure, we probably are up to up to snuff on the same, right? But if you have to bring a ladder out, I will win every single time. I will win. Well, I'm not just going to rinse the wind. That's not what you're doing, man. It's amazing to me that water fed... As long as it's been out there, people think it's somehow stealing their thunder of being an amazing window cleaner. It's not. It's just a really, really good tool. That's like, yeah, I don't use a Mormon accelerator because I don't fan. Fanning is cheating. Or, I don't know. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I digress. How about storage of your poles? Another tip or trick or hack or whatever is if you're having a ladder rack or you have the top or anything like that, go on Amazon and buy a PVC kit for plumbers or tubes. It's a tube kit. What it is is it's a cap with a screw on lid and a cap on the other side. What I do is I put a chain in the cap to the top so I don't lose the cap or my guys don't lose the cap. And that's how I store the poles right? You could have a pole. So say you have a full size, right? Uh, six, six and a half feet. You have micro poles, which are like 53 and a half inches, right? So just like four and a half feet. You could put them all in the same tube. A tip with that is that all you need to do, because they'll slide in there, is just take a um, rope that will go to the very back of the tube and just have a circle of PVC, right? That fits in there. It could be PVC, anything that's cut, and the rope is in there, right? There's a rope through there so you could pull everything out with a tug of the rope. I put foam in the back and front of the PVC because as you stop, the poles will slide. If the go, the poles will slide. I don't want any damage, so I just put some uh, furniture foam in there. And I got a great, super secure spot for my poles. They're not getting crushed. Ladders aren't falling over on them. You know, uh, they're they're up in the top. People aren't really going to go in that tube because they're like, oh, what's in there? Nothing of value, of course. Right? It's just a really, really good and clever way. You can also see what's in there super fast. You can have the sections. You can have extra sections. You can have pieces on top of each other. You can have all of your water-fed poles in a PVC tube on a ladder rack or mounted to the top of a cap or on the inside rail of your bed, wherever you have. Maybe you have a van, right? It's really nice to do that. Poles are pretty rigid, but I want them to last even longer. So I make sure to put them in a PVC storage. That's what I do. Storage is super, super easy. With filter storage, all you're really doing, you're just bringing pre-filters with you. That's the only thing you're changing out super, super regular. Resin changes, keep the resin back at the shop. You're not going to change it out in the field usually if you're running an RODI. But with the hose, 
and the brush. Take it off, set it in a bin, in a cubby or whatever. Don't set the brush down on the bristles because you'll wear those bristles out prematurely. And then the pole is just by itself. Some people like to keep the brushes and hose and everything. And they go, what if I got the univalve? Univalve is an on-off valve that goes inside the pole. Well, then everything is there. I wrap the hose, coil it towards the bottom, and I strap it with a Velcro strap on the bottom. Super simple. That Velcro strap is always uh, connected to the uh, um, bottom of the pole. We just put it on there so that when I have the hose, it has the brush on there, and then on the bottom it has the coil of the uh, pole hose. Right? That's what I do. Doesn't mean that's what you have to do, but cool little uh, tip and trick, right? But let's go back to function. The function, say you're getting low pressure. It's very, very simple. Three things, a few things it could be. The number one cause of crappy pressure is something you're not going to believe. Unless you've been in this a long time, you maybe notice this. But the number one reason you have garbage pressure is your pre-filter. People are like, no, no, I just changed. It doesn't matter when you just changed it. So what happens in a pre-filter is because you're running a pre-filter, carbon filter, right? Carbon sediment filter even. That is running at say a five micron um, opening, right? So that means the filter will filter down to five microns. That's really, really small. If there's algae in the lines, if there's any type of anything in the hose that you connected it to, it could be something as simple as uh, dirt, but it could be something as weird and complicated as like an algae or slime of some sort that's in there, right? That filter does its job and it stops it. It also stops big chunks. So people are like, well, you can't block. It's not that that blocks it. But your pre-filter will always restrict your pressure first if it's clogged, if it has any type of slime on it. So what happens is people put a pressure in that cuts it down, takes that like 60 PSI and drops it down to like 40. And then that 40 is trying to get through the whole system where the RO is the full actual restrictive part. And then the flow doesn't come out. They're like, I got a ton of wastewater, but I don't have any water coming out of the system. My RO must be clogged. No, you, you can't. Basically, you cannot. If your filter, if your system is running properly, you almost cannot clog an RO. The only way you could clog an RO is by having an algae bloom inside the system, which is from long sitting for a long time. Change your pre-filter. Here's the thing to do if you don't have a pre-filter on you. By the way, in an RO DI system, change that every like month or two. They're cheap. They're like 10, 11 bucks. Just change it. But if you're in the field, you're like, man, I got garbage pressure. Do this one test. Take the pre-filter out. That's it. Now, don't run it that way for a long period of time. But just take that filter out, close it back up, turn the system on, and let it run for a minute. You're like, ah, all of the pressure is good. Stop the water, change the, or, or the pre-filter. That's it. Easy, easy test. If you do it, even if I've had a pre-filter literally clog the first job, I have no idea what was going on with this. It was in a black hose, which you end up seeing a little bit more because it heats the water that is still in the hose. It was gross, gnarly. But people are like, no, no, it's new. I've only had one job on it. Okay, so you've had a job on it. I want you to have a new pre-filter. New pre-filter. Swap it out. If you got an extra pre-filter, which you should carry one with you anyway, change it out. If that makes a difference, you got the problem. If it doesn't make the difference, the next thing is when you're testing this again without hose. Remember, the longer the hose you have on there, the less pressure. So if you got the system set up and you have 250 feet of hose with rinse bars and everything, you're like, oh, the pressure stinks. Yeah. You just drop that hose down and you can build that pressure back up. But in that system, if nothing else changed, between one job to the next one, you've checked the pre-filter. It's not the pre-filter. It's the incoming PSI from the house. This is back to where people are like, oh, no, it's got good pressure. You got a pressure gauge? No, no, I can see it's got great pressure. Look at this. And they show us water spraying. No, that's flow. It's got great flow. Pressure is, say you throw, put your thumb on a garden hose. Some of them, you know, you can almost stop it. You know, kind of squeezes out a little bit. But some of them, it blows your thumb off. That's pressure. 
but it's the same flow. It could be the same flow between them. Pressure, PSI, is what pushes the water, forces it through the membrane, which is the restrictive part of the system. People go, oh man, I've done, I've used it. I, I could tell you how many times people will argue me with the, the fact of what it is. We'll go through everything and then all of a sudden, I, this is another, and if you're watching, this happens all the time. This isn't just you. Uh, guy uh, called, we did everything. He's like, man, I don't know what it is. Pressure is great. I've done this job before. I said, well, we check, 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 check. I know what all of it is. We've checked everything. It's your PSI coming out of the house. Nah, I've done this before. I know it's not that. I mean, it's not a lot of different things. It's that. And, uh, well, you know, we'll just do a traditional and go from there. Try it on a known water source, which, again, it could have been a known source. Very rare. But bring it back to your house check. The reason his pressure dropped is that they were working on a water main. He didn't know that until the next day. Watched the news and they talked about it. It was the water pressure. Didn't even know that. Right? So that's why we always say when everything's done and it is the pressure, if you're on a new job... You may not use that system. Wells, there's crappy well pumps, there's bad pipes, there's just bad pressure. It's just very common. Not city water. That doesn't matter. It absolutely does not matter. It's more of a chance that it's going to be good pressure, but it could absolutely be pressure every single time. And if your pressure isn't high enough to push it through the system, you're getting water through the discharge because there's zero restriction, right? If it's not your pre filter, it's your PSI. The water coming out of your discharge is the water that did not go through the RO membrane, right? It hit that and then turned back out and washed itself out. So people are like, there's tons of water. Can I cap that? No, that's not how it works. Well, something's wrong. That's got to be clogged. Nope. There's like billions of openings. That's not it. What it is, is the pressure is not high enough to force it through the membrane. You're seeing discharge water. But nothing coming out. Oh, the discharge is perfect, man. The pressure is great. No, that's the water that just has no pressure. It doesn't matter. It's flowing, right? Another thing that will kill your pressure, if you're new or you're not, is long hose out of the system. Hose that's too big. Because remember, flow and PSI work. If you raise the PSI, you drop the flow. If you raise the flow, you drop the PSI. So if you're using like half-inch giant hose out of the system, well, you're going to kill the PSI. It has to be built back up. A lot of guys are using those expandable hoses. You're killing your pressure instantly by using expandable hoses to feed the thing. Run a three-quarter inch to the system as big as you can. Let all the water in there, all the pressure, all the everything. It forces through the system and then max three-eighths from the system to the pull holes. Pull holes are the skinny stuff. That's a 5 16 OD, 3 16 ID. That 3 16 inside diameter is what builds that pressure back up. If you are running, and I please hear me right now, if you want to improve your system even more, if you're running a system right now, an RODI, or any system actually, and you're running pull hose, right? 3 16 to 5 16 OD. Uh, 3 16 is the ID. That's that skinny stuff that goes up and connects to the brush. If you went out and got like 100 feet of that and you're connecting all of that skinny stuff to the system, you're killing your flow. You're killing your PSI right away. Technically, your PSI is being held but being restricted. So to change that, if you ever want to like, hey, I just want to get a little bit more out of that, go like this. Your system to a 3 eighths inch hose right you could do 100 feet of three ace that three ace then connects to the pull hose and goes up i guarantee you're going to be like what the heck i've had all this water flow the whole time right long hose kills pressure right remember when you were a kid and you tried to drink a soda out of like 10 straws at chuck e cheese right it didn't work long hose kills pressure rinse bars kill pressure Gives you great flow, right? 24 jets, but it kills the PSI, which is fine because all you need to do is have the water get past the bristles. You can rinse on the glass with a rinse bar, right? All of those things, giant jets, multiple jets, right? If you have two jets in a brush and you add two more, well, now you just cut your PSI in half, right? Because you're getting more flow. All those things can kind of go through it, right? 
By the way, on a side note, because I'm rambling anyway, don't test your TDS out of your brush ever. I said that. Don't test your TDS out of your brush. You will always get a higher number than your system because brushes hold dirt. Boar's hair holds dirt. Test it right out of your system. Right out of that, before you connect the hoses coming out of your system, test it right there. People are like, I can't get my, my system below six, seven, eight. Well, you're still pure, clean, obviously. But the reason that is, is because you tested it out of your brush. So test it out of your system and you will totally see a different result. Another thing that people do not understand in systems is the resin. The resin has to be tight. Open your system right now if you're interested. Or when you do a change, you'll see it. Your resin all of a sudden will drop and there'll be a big gap. And you're like, what the heck? Am I losing resin? No. All you're doing is it packed in with the water. You get channeling with that resin. If you're not quite getting perfect results or perfect TDS and you just did a resin change, it's your resin. No, your resin can't be bad. It's incredibly rare, incredibly almost impossible for resin to be bad if you just bought it. Well, if you bought it from us, we sell so much resin, we get it in bulk. We get these giant, giant 55 gallon drum barrels. And then from that, we do scoop and measure to pull it all out. So if your resin is bad, hundreds of people's resin is bad. So resin can't really be bad. It can expend quicker, different types of resin, things like that maybe. If you let resin dry out, it'll be bad. But if it's brand new resin, you didn't let it dry out, resin can sit. And if you didn't pack it in there tight enough, then the water is thicker than actually touches the resin. You get channeling. And if you get channeling, meaning more water doesn't all touch, every bit of water doesn't touch every bit of resin, then the problem is your TDS isn't there. So pack it tight. In resin, there is no too tight. They're balls. So every time you put a ball, there's always a gap. See the top, see the bottom, top, bottom, right? You can't pack it too tight. Pack your resin. And one last thing just to talk about ROs, those last few years. So if you're wanting to change your RO after a couple months or whatever, you think that's what it is, or you say, I just changed my resin, my TDS is still high, it's my ROs. As much as I don't want to tell you you're doing something wrong, you're doing it wrong. You're spending hundreds of dollars on an RO and you absolutely do not need a new RO. If you want to test the efficiency of your RO, disconnect it from going to the DI. Test the water out of the spigot and test the water coming right out of the RO. The RO should be around 90% efficient. So you get 100 out of the uh, spigot, you should be at 10 coming out of that. If you're at 50 coming out of that, then your RO is bad. Get a new RO. But if you're spot on, it's always your resin. Because even if your RO is bad, your resin is still going to get that down if the resin is proper. TDS is resin, flow is pre-filter, and the workhorse is the RO. Anyway, I hope this got you either more confident in water fed or maybe more confused. But either way, I'm here for you. I am a rep for windowcleaner.com, so let me know. Questions, anything, orders. I love putting orders in. By the way, on a side note, the new PCI compliance crap. If you've been putting orders in with me, we have to like, you have to put your credit card in our system now. We can't legally do that. So we cleared all our credit cards and now you have to enter it. If I put an order in and put your credit card in, cool, I can still do that if you're in a rush. Definitely. But it won't save your card. If you want to save it and you text me, I'll text you a little link. It'll just show you where to put it. Super easy. But anyway, call me 862-312-2026. That's my number. Text me, call me, please. It would be absolutely rad. By the way, we're going to the huge convention. Come see us at the huge convention. Get American Window Cleaner Magazine. Understand this is huge. This is a passion project. It's absolutely amazing. You're going to be blown away by the magazine itself. It's it's just something else in your journey of just submersing yourself in all this. Awesome journalists, awesome articles. No, everything is not written by me. There's a ton of different journalists that get their own point of view, their own ideas, their own everything. Cool pictures, it's just awesome. Plus, you get to put stickers on all your crap, buckets and everything else. So please do that. I definitely, definitely appreciate it. it really, truly means a ton to me. AWCMAG.com. Um, uh, side note, if you're still here, uh, I do a little bit of uh, private coaching and I have one slot that just opened up. Uh, so uh, definitely let me know. Um, but yeah, 
man other than that i hope you guys have a killer week i hope you get into water fed but more importantly go out there and be epic